Hello and welcome back once again to CBRMTG. We are heading into round two of the uh, CanCon 2019 National Highlander Championships. Uh, Michael Wybro on Salt High Combo and James O'Rourke on Green White Beats. Uh, I'm joined with Philip Nicholson. Me. Hello. <laughs> back at it again. Uh, trying to plug through as many of these... Uh, these interesting videos as we possibly can um, while I can trap Phil in my house. But um, speaking of which, Phil, uh, how do you feel about this Saltai combo deck? Why don't you run us through and uh, tell us how it ticks? Sure. So it's got a, a couple of things going on. Kind of the the main thing it's, is that it's a, an Oath and Ruins deck. So it's trying to Oath into something like an Emrakul or a Grizzlebrand, one of those kind of really big game-winning creatures that does it all, all by themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, with kind of the big backup strategy being a life null in package, including things like uh, strip mine and a dark depths to kind of make a, a marillage or to strip mine your friend out of the game as a bit of an alternative. Yep. Uh, and then it's got a, a doomsday in it. I believe kind of the main idea with doomsday is to utilize Shellbuck Isle, just the blue hideaway land mm -hmm. that you cast spells for free if your library has I think it's 20 or fewer cards in it. Yep. Which doomsday will definitely accomplish. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is just kind of an alternative way of cheating something like an Emrakul into play. Yeah, and then the rest of his deck is basically pieces to find uh, those different combos because you can hit from kind of a couple of different points of interaction. It makes it very hard for your opponent to deal with, um, with uh, Michael having sort of the, as you mentioned before, the crop rotation as well as expedition map. Uh, and then we have... Uh, like the intuition, muddle the mixture, mystical teachings. Like these are sort of things uh, that you're most of the deck you're going to be spinning your wheels. Most of the time you're going to be spinning your wheels trying to find different pieces of the combo. Um, and then uh, the rest of the time you'll be, you know, trying to two card combo your opponent out of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's just really just trying to achieve an, an unfair win as best as it can. And when it can't. Uh, it's probably not having a great time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It kind of has one game plan. It does have a couple of backup uh, little pieces. I mean, it's not 100% uh, combo, although it's very sort of geared towards trying to combo off as fast as possible, but you are playing like little bits and bobs like Raven's Crime and Life in the Lion, which um, uh, Phil as a progenitor of Greenback Pox will know very well is uh, quite the combo. Uh, Liliana the Veil, vale, um, and then a couple of sweepers with uh, Yehane's Expertise and Toxic Deluge. Like, these are the sorts of things that could sort of uh, slow down the game for you so that you can spin your wheels for long enough to administer your combo in time. Yeah, it just means that if a, a game goes long against control or against uh, an aggro deck, depending on kind of what pieces you are trying to leverage, it means that you can slow things down or strip your opponent's resources so that they can't stop you from kind of going off in your own time if you don't draw one of those like unfair starts where you kind of make a, a merit lodge on mm. turn three or you just oath into uh, Emrakul turn two or something like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does have the uh, explosive power to sort of get those combo pieces out very early um, with, you know, Dark Ritual into um, Dark Ritual into Doomsday, which is basically win the game as long as um, casting Emrakul can win the game against your opponent, which usually it does the job, but uh, um, we'll see. The uh, the interesting... Uh, he's playing out his Sheldock Isle now, possibly for no real value at all. Um, you may as well you may as well look at them and get the worst card out of the four, but I don't think we'll be uh, flipping the card at this point um, unless you get really lucky with the Emrakul and then uh, find the Doomsday later on the line you can um, sort it out. Well, I think the big benefit here is just that he's, he's got a fast bond in play, so he may as well play out his lands that come into play tapped. Yeah, that's reasonable. Um, that's then reasonable. he has, just has access. Then sort of next turn, all he needs to be can play... Lands come to play untapped, you'll mm. have access to all of the mana in his hand. Yeah, it looks like we're having a judge call right now. Uh, Michael flipping over five cards instead of four, which is um, hideaway only allows you to flip over four cards. Oh, sorry, look at four cards. And uh, he did he did pick a glance at it, so he's going to get the um, the judge to come over and administer the judge call, of which um, <clears throat> I believe he's going to have a random card put on top of his library, but we'll let the judge call continue out. Uh, on James's side, we have the um, uh, green, green white beats or green white aggro, kind of a deck that he's been playing around with uh, last few tournaments. Um, 
and he seems to be enjoying it at least enough to play it uh, again today on uh, quite a big day for um for Highlander being the national championships. Uh, but leading on Athalia is definitely a good way to slow down what uh, Michael's trying to do, no matter what it is. Yeah, and Athalia is definitely a card with uh, some very important text against anyone trying to cast a lot of non-creature spells, whether it be a control deck or especially a combo deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Athalia is just a card that really ruins their day, and against, against combo it usually buys you at least one turn, and sometimes uh, several, because a lot of the time these... Combo decks are kind of trying to chain together multiple balls at a turn, whether that yeah. be you know, cantripping into things or whatever it might be. It's just really rough for you to do that when all your spells cost one more. Mm. And here comes a follow up, Tom Goyf. Uh, not huge at the moment, but uh, definitely has the capability to be large in the future. Uh, very interesting. I mean, what you were saying before about Thalia slowing down your opponent, chaining together multiple spells in a turn. Uh, Michael doesn't actually have to do that too much because he's got um, Expedition Map and Sylvan Scrying and Into the North and these sorts of things. Like He can just sort of slowly tutor up his um, package, and if James O'Rock doesn't have the Exile-based removal that you do commonly see in white, but, I mean, he needs to have it in hand, then he's not going to be able to deal with the 2020 that's going to come his way eventually. No, uh, I mean, Dathalia definitely isn't impactful as impactful here as it would be against a combo deck like Storm. Mm-hmm. But it still definitely slows slows down by kind of one turn at worst. Uh, and if if Michael is looking to use cards like Expedition Map and Sylvan Library, to, or you know model a mixture, then a lot of those things are then costing kind of one more to to do their thing. Mm. Um, and then you know once once he's kind of had all of his tutors cost one more to do their thing, he suddenly needs to kind of assemble the actual combo which mm. depending on what that is could end up costing more as well um luckily the transmute ability on what the mixture doesn't cost anymore yeah um, which is gonna be good it's gonna allow him to get that oath of druids seems like a pretty reasonable plan i mean uh james is going to he does have that um uh path to exile in his hand so if it's a gristle blame that uh, flipped off the top by the way michael only has as we mentioned before two creatures in his deck one emrakul and one gristle brand so basically uh, when you flip Oath of Druids, it's pretty likely that you're going to win. Um, and so that's probably, almost certainly, the uh, the reason that he's going to go for that line starting from next turn. Uh, but uh, we'll see We'll see how it works out for him. Hopefully it works out okay. Obviously yeah. this Burning Catacomb's not coming in tapped. That is the wrong Thalia, which he might be mistaken of. Yeah, I mean, the Oath of Druids is very nice, but he is getting attacked for, I think, at least... Six this turn if Dryad Arbor cracks in as well. Yeah. Um, Which and... is a two turn, three turn clock still. Um, but Tomagoff is only going to get bigger. Yeah, I mean, it just means that, uh, you know, if James just draws a tiny bit of extra power, he's got enough to um, kind of crack in before that Oath can really do its thing. Uh, mm. James also drew a Green Sun Zenith here, which is. Pretty nice. Um, it's kind of being a little bit punished by his own Thalia here because he can only green suns for one. Yeah. And I'm sure he'd like to green suns for two and go find uh, Kasali Pride Mage. But um, the Dryad Mills. I think he's. I do. think he's just looking for his his Savannah lands here, really. Yeah. He wants, yeah. Absolutely. Wants to add as much power to the board as possible to try and uh, buy himself a bit of time. I think he's sitting on a path in hand, mm-hmm. so he mm-hmm. only needs to deal with one uh, Oath of Druids occurrence. If it's Emrakul, he can smash through it um, because Michael won't get the cast trigger. Mm-hmm. If it's a Grizzle Brand, he can just path the Grizzle Brand um, and crack in. I, yeah. imagine his, his I think he's still yeah. dead uh, Still dead to a Emrakul, even if he does end up flipping it. But unfortunately, uh, he does have a Treetop Village uh, James has on his side. So if he top decks the land, he will just be able to kill uh, Michael on the spot. Uh, he doesn't currently have lethal. He's, uh... Well, he, he does, right? Because the Dryad Arbor can have to reactivate Treetop Village. And that oh, of still course. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is exactly his. And he, he wouldn't be dead to an Emrakul flip anyway, because Emrakul doesn't have haste. Yeah. So you still need to wait an entire turn cycle to actually attack with the Emrakul. Yeah, yeah. And James would, just yeah. has so many attackers that could just, you know, one of them can die to Emrakul when Emrakul blocks. But it's mm-hmm. fine, mm-hmm. because Michael will still be dead. It's still, yeah, just a little bit slow, unfortunately, on the. Um... Uh, on on the plan that uh, they're on the oath of druids plan, but he does have he does have uh, 
he does have board wipes in his deck, but even um, I mean, I, I mean, a toxic deluge at this point would hurt a lot, but it might it may have been his only choice. However, uh, I don't even think he has that um that pleasure as his hand is not exactly where it needs to be. Even that um frantic search will still cost him one because although he can untap three lands, uh, it still won't work out exactly how he wants it to work out. Yeah. Um. So he's just gonna run out the the earth of druids here. Um, and I guess we'll we'll see if James uh, opts to activate that tree top village, or if he's just going to yeah he's just gonna crack it for turn. Mm. It leaves him kind of dead to uh, oh nothing actually. I was gonna say um fatal push with that open black mana like he could be representing fatal push, but with Thalia it's uh, not even an issue, and we're just gonna go straight to game two. Yeah, I think I think with the path back up, even if that were you know a different creature and not Thalia, and he did get fatal push there letting your opponent oath once you've still probably got enough on board damage that you can beat that yeah 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 it looks like james just had it all and uh going to sideboards now uh on on james's side we have uh blossoming defense carpet of flowers celestial purge choke containing priest disenchant tremoka's command gideon ally of zendikar kataki wars wage uh obson bailoff oversoul of dusk remorseful cleric sagata host of heralds stony silence timely reinforcements and on uh, Michael's side, we have Innocent Blood, Ghastly Demise, um, Fatal Push, Dark Blast, uh, Emerald Charm, Mental Misstep, Remand, Repeal, uh, Spell Pierce, Spell Snare, Stifle, Swan Song, Gitaxian Probe, Manalik, and Extract. Uh, Over the Soul of Dusk actually got a lot of uh, attention over the weekend because um, uh, in a top eight match that James O'Rourke ended up getting into, uh, that was parallel to the games that you'll see on footage uh, in uh, in our other videos. James O'Rourke was playing against Tom Cliff on um, on Kes Pyle, and he brought in this Oversoul of Dusk, which is a five mana uh, five five, I believe, and it has um, it has protection from red, blue, bl uh, sorry, red, blue, and black, which uh, was his secret tech against Kes Pyle and. Everyone erupted with laughter because uh, Tom Clift only had an hour of devastation that he could get <laughs> because he didn't have the damnation to bring in. Yeah, I mean, Oversoul of Dusk is definitely a, a magic card that uh, it exists, and I've certainly seen it played <laughs> in Highlander before James played it, but I guess maybe uh, Melbourne didn't get their shipments of uh, Shadow Moor Eventide packs. Yeah, for and sure, so just for sure. We weren't, weren't really familiar with the Oversoul technology. <laughs> Yeah, I and that was the first time that I'd ever seen it, and uh, I thought it was uh, commander only that it could ever be played. But uh, look, when uh, James is in the hot seat, uh, any commander, st any commander card can be playable in Highlander. Sure, um, <laughs> they do. I, I think neither player has a huge number of pieces to sideboard here, especially since James only really saw Oath of druids it means yeah. he's less uh inclined to bring cards like remorseful cleric mm -hmm. that kind of attack the graveyard and the life from the Lunar strategy but he's still got things like containment priest and disenchant that can put in a lot of work yeah um i mean he, sh he saw sheldock isle surely that means like you could probably piece it together uh yeah, that he was going to try and go down the doomsday package but um even it's then it's also not that costly to just board in remorseful cleric over something else yeah um, for sure like a, a palace jailer or something pretty slow um i think the james can probably anticipate there will be some sort of unfairness going on for uh sure. considering the oath of druids and the sheldock isle but uh, because he didn't get that much information, like he's probably feeling okay anyway, considering uh, his deck has enough disruption main board that he might be able to take out this combo deck. Yeah, I think the the green white beats it's kind of its strength is that the disruption is also staple to creatures. Yeah. Um, which means that while at the same time as you um, attacking your opponent and kind of enacting your game plan of reducing the life total to zero you are yeah. also uh kind of stalling their game plan down quite a lot uh, i think michael's got a few pieces here too innocent blood is pretty good fatal push is fine dark blast is fine ghastly demise is fine here um you wouldn't bring in uh, emerald charm against uh, your opponent no i think <laughs> that the most relevant mode of emerald charm is to destroy a non aura enchantment yeah uh so that's probably michael's chosen tech against something like blood moon 
And yeah, then it, it can just also potentially untap a, untap a shellbuck isle mm -hmm. to kind of oh, that's true. Pull a, a okay. Turn okay. I, I imagine that's kind of the main thing that Michael is going with with that card. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the rest of what is going on, he, he would be particularly excited to board in. Mm. Definitely some, um, uh, definitely some interesting pieces coming out of Michael's side, but. Uh... I mean, he, he, he ended up pretty happy with his record overall at a 5-2 finish, uh, narrowly avoiding the uh, the top 8, finishing 12th, I think. So there was still definitely some room. Um, there's definitely some room for this deck to uh, do very well. Um, unfortunately, we didn't see that very much game one with uh, the Thalia just coming down at the correct time. And uh, James feeling pretty happy going 1-0 uh, going at the moment against a... A combo deck which you should not actually be favored in really i think it's actually a a pretty good matchup i think that kind of these days the creatures that green and white has access to just have so much kind of relevant incidental text mm -hmm. against so many mm -hmm. different strategies that you can often just uh, attack them in ways that really don't feel very fair as the combo player doesn't you know having a, a thalia whether it's it doesn't really matter which Thalia it is in a lot of cases, you know cards like Containment Priest and Remorseful Cleric that attack you repeatedly yeah, while yeah. also kind of stopping you from enacting your game plan um, in such a, a harsh way. And then there's also cards like uh, Kasali Pride Mage and mm. Knight of Autumn that are kind of destroying any unfair artifacts and enchantments you're trying to run out. I think that it's it's actually a, not as bad for the green white. Uh, beats deck as you might assume it is for a deck without kind of counter spells and hand mm -hmm. disruption mm -hmm. to fight against a combo deck yeah it seems like uh it seems like he's put a lot of effort and time into this deck uh he also quite notably has a point uh put into caracas which uh is very relevant against everything that michael's trying to win with yeah i mean it's not great against a strip mine life in the loam like obviously it yeah, can bounce sure. a marillage but you know if it's been strip mined then it can't really do that anymore but yeah. it does definitely massively impede the early uh the oath of druids plan mm -hmm. and it does definitely impede any kind of dark depths plan that isn't kind of relying on graveyard recursion and a strip mine to get itself set up yeah also james uh falling into the trap that i've sort of only thought about recently after i saw these um after i saw all the matches on cancon weekend and also sort of just uh talking about uh talking about decks with people is that um playing Batterskull in a stoneforge mystic deck and highlander just seems kind of like a trap um obviously so good in legacy death and taxes and anything where you have stoneforge mystic you definitely want to get Batterskull as it is the best equipment but um in a singleton format unless you can actively get that stoneforge mystic very easily it seems like Batterskull doesn't seem better than like it, it 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 feels just better to get jit or skull clamp which he does have in his deck but um yeah i don't know if i like casting batter skull on five as a backup plan you know i think the batter skull on five is fine um and i think that it's it's certainly not you know the best thing in the world but the fail state of a five mana four four Vigilance Lifelink is still a pretty good fail state. Sure. Um, and I think most of the time when I've seen James resolve the Stone Forge, he's still finding uh, a Jude or a Skull Clamp before Batter Skull, which is, you know, another option in the toolbox. Okay. Um, I do think it's interesting here. Um, Michael, uh, last on his last turn, ran out a Raven's Crime against James, which is obviously a very powerful card with Life from the Loam and any other way to recur lands from your graveyard. Yeah. Um, but James's deck happens to be playing uh, pretty much all of the green and white idiots that can punish you for making your opponents discard cards by putting them into play for free. <laughs> uh, cards like Loxodon Smiter, uh, Wiltleaf Lidge, and I believe he was also playing Nullhide Ferox uh, <laughs> on the weekend. He's certainly playing it now if he wasn't done. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, definitely playing with fire by casting Raven's Crime against this Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just giving him his choice of uh, whatever he wants to discard. Very, very interesting. Very good against... Um, and, yeah, you can see it in his list. He's playing a main board. We'll link the list in the description below. But, um, yeah, Nullhide Ferox definitely making main boards. So, 
I mean, we're talking about um, whether or not it was good enough to play a five drop in his aggro green white deck, but I mean, Nullhead Ferox is more expensive and seemingly a pretty good card. Yeah, I mean, I've never even seen what the cost and cost of Nullhead Ferox is because I'm pretty sure it just gets put into play for free. <laughs> yeah, that's right. My apologies. No, it's uh, it it is actually a four drop, but um, the fact that um. It's a 6-6 six, six for 4, but uh, if your opponent ever wants to kill it, uh, they have to pay 2 mana to have it not have Hexproof anymore, uh, and then they can attack it. So if you want to Fatal Push it, you can, but it costs you uh, getting Revolt, paying 2, and then paying the black for it, which is like, you're probably pretty happy with that anyway. Um, also, if you're putting it into Battlefield for free, you'll take what you can get, right? Yeah, I mean, James didn't have any of those options uh, in this exact circumstance, which was kind of lucky for Michael. Yeah. But he still managed to piece together a pretty nasty board to give himself a Mirror Crusader, as well as a Thorn Lieutenant. So kind of that's that's one creature that's pretty difficult for Michael to deal with in the Mirror Crusader, given those protection from black. And mm. the Thorn Lieutenant, uh, if Michael does decide he does have to deal with that creature, it'll leave behind a nice little token warrior friend. Yeah. Um, so it's it's definitely a, a pretty real clock. It's got Michael dead in just two swings by itself, and mm. sorry, two swings with a, a fetch land or any other point of damage, and three swings otherwise. Yeah, and uh, Mirror Crusader. Now that's now that's a creature that I can get behind. Being able to have the protection from uh, black and green uh, means that Michael's kind of turned off from most of his game plan about trying to get rid of it with uh, any sort of spot removal. If he has a sweeper, then that's great, but uh, he's definitely going to be looking looking for a sweeper as much as he can. Yeah, I mean, any any kind of sweeper here is great. Uh, I mean, Toxic Deluge, you have to pay a 3 because the only is a 2-3, but like a Yehani's Expertise or anything like that here would be pretty great for Michael, but if he doesn't have it, um he's certainly facing down an awful lot of damage oh yeah that's that's six damage a turn in two creatures and uh michael hasn't really done anything uh of of too much significance yet he's uh, i mean that's what combo decks do right they um they don't do anything for a few turns while they play cantrips and spin their wheels and then at one point they just win the game so we could see something still very powerful come out of michael's side but uh not a whole lot from not a whole lot from him just of yet. He does have a crucible and a um, frantic search in hand, so if he lines it up okay, he can kind of um, uh, see what he gets off the top. If it's two lands, he can bin it, and then um, has he played his land for turn? He may have already. Um, um I'm not sure. Uh, he's he's will, also got yeah. a strip mine sitting in his graveyard, so if he does find the opportunity to wrath these creatures away, mm -hmm. he's certainly got. Uh, a pretty good avenue to kind of lock James out of the game if he can kind of, he, need, he just needs to find kind of time to wrap those creatures away and get that crucible out without you know, more follow up in, in terms yeah. of more, more creatures and more power from James. Yeah, it looks like a, um, a expedition map and another unknown card pulled off the top from this frantic search, but um, yeah, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't look too great, unfortunately. He does have that um, Noxious Revival that he seems to be putting into the bin. Uh, Noxious Revival being quite a good a good card only if you're doing very specific things. Uh, otherwise, it's um, supremely bad card disadvantage and uh, at the very cost of two life as well. It um, it could be better, you know. Well, you can pay your email for Noxious uh, Revival. I, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> That's like how for X it matter works. I've certainly seen it done before. <laughs> Um, mm. but yeah, you need to be putting kind of a miracle on top or a card that kind of immediately wins you the game. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's sort of, you know, like all of those top deck tutors, like Vampiric Tutor or, or Worldly Tutor, except that the card has to be in your graveyard, not your library, yeah. which is a, a much bigger ask in most situations. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it gives you a second go at some cards as well, if you want to, especially if you're doing combo, you want to have a chance to re reset up the combo thanks to the Noxious Revival putting a specific combo piece back on top of your library. Sure, if, if what you're putting back on top of your library will win you the game, then it can be, in, in an unfair way, then it can be very good. Yeah. Um, but you know, in, in most sort of fair strategies, it's a bit of a bit of a stinker. Mm, bit of a stinky stinky. Speaking of which, uh, Michael is in a bit of a stinky situation at the moment. Again, uh, dead to the creatures on board and hoping to top deck a sweeper but he just hasn't been able to find the sweepers in time you know this um i mean we do have a tabernacle pendrel veil uh 
uh, in our list of cards that we can get. He did thumb it away already. Um, at one point, do you just like... I don't, I don't even think he has a, a Glacial Chasm in his list of cards that he can get. So, unfortunately, Tabernacle doesn't actually do anything here because he has three creatures and three lands. He just pays for it, swings out, and kills him. But um, Yeah, I, I think so. The reason I think Michael was considering holding off on the Expedition map is that uh, the Miri's Guile, he'd get to see three cards in his upkeep, and if none of them sort of a toxic deluge, he'd be able to crack the expedition map, go find the land, and try again. Yeah. But he's kind of opting to crack it now, uh, and he can either... He's go going to go find the Thespian stage, so I guess he's not really sure what he's hoping for. I guess it depends on what the uh, the other card in hand is, because obviously... He's, he's on six. He uh, he can take a hit from the Thorn Lieutenant and the um, Dryad Militant and block with a Marillage on the Mirror Crusade. Well, he can't Crusade. make a Marillage. I can't, I can't even um, block the Marillage any... I can't even block the Mirror Crusade anyway, so... Well, no, but he can't play Dark Depths and Thespian Stage in the same time. He yeah. doesn't have an exploration or anything like that. Yeah. He does have, uh, <laughs> he does have it. Dark Depths on top. Yeah, he, just he... Doesn't, he just doesn't... He isn't going to have the time to... Yeah make it all happen yeah that is very unfortunate he does need an extra turn also the mirror crew said he needs to not have protection from black because even if he could do it um as i miss uh miss correctly saw and hopefully we'll get punished in the youtube comments about it was that uh yeah mirror crew said a protection from black does not mean that uh, means that um poor old uh what's his face is just not going to cut it or marit but... yeah i believe james may also have a Path to Exile setting his hand. I can definitely see a, a Tyler's Tracker and a Banner Skull. I'm just not sure what that third white card is, but I think that might be uh, it's a Tyler's Tracker. Oh, yeah, Path to Exile. Yeah. So I think so, he is playing the Path to Exile. I think, I think well. James just has uh, all these in this situation. <laughs> you know, and Michael and Michael sees it. Yeah. He did see a Restore on top, which um, allows him to put a uh, land from the graveyard onto the battlefield. But um, I don't think he was able to construct a situation where that would work out for him. So unfortunately, uh, for the second time on footage, James is going to verse a combo deck and then never see them play uh, <laughs> play out their combo, uh, as we saw in a previous video at uh, GP Melvin, who was versing Channel Mirror, and uh, just didn't see the Channel Mirror happen. So he's got a pretty good uh, winning record against um, combo at the moment. So we'll see if that travels uh, ahead for him in the future. Uh, James O'Rock takes it down to O. Oh, unfortunately, Michael goes into the 1-1 one -one bracket. Um, and we'll see what happens next round, but uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you for round three of CanCon's National Highlander Championship. Thank you very much.